first big story of the of the of the pod, Yuli. We got to talk about it. I didn't see it coming. I was surprised. I think as everyone else, when I saw Kevin Jones's post on Instagram, where he was basically saying, "Sayonara, prodigy, I'm out." What? Kind of, kind of, kind of out of nowhere. Right? Yeah. First, uh, like, what was your initial reaction? I guess when you saw that. Ooh. I I honestly kind of wasn't surprised that much. Really? I really wasn't. No. Hmm. I feel I felt like I don't know. I felt like they've been kind of like stagnant with their social media with him and pushing of his products and stuff. And I didn't. I don't know. Just from the naked eye of me consuming like content from Prodigy, I felt like. There was one, once it happened, I kind of connected the dots and was like, all right, like maybe this relationship wasn't going very well. Yeah, you didn't you didn't suspect it was going to happen, but once it happened, you weren't shocked. Right, right, right. Okay. Yeah. Um, so a couple of things. So the first one, obviously, I reached out to Kevin and invited him on the podcast to see if he obviously I mean this is the big story of the week. If he wanted to discuss anything, he uh politely declined, saying at this moment in time he isn't able to really talk about anything. So I'm assuming some sort of announcement, he's kind of alluded to that multiple times, like there's something coming. So I guess once he makes that announcement, then maybe he can come on the podcast and maybe give some intel on what exactly went down. I'm not entirely sure. I also reached out to Will Schustrick, who obviously is a big person um, over at Prodigy, First, congratulate congratulations to him and his wife. They just brought in a new baby today. Yeah. So congratulations. I didn't know that was happening. So I got a text back being like, hey, give me a second. It was like a picture of their newborn. I was like, oh my gosh. <laughs> take your time. <laughs> no. There's no rush at all. Please take your time. Um, but he basically responded back saying, Kevin is going somewhere else to another team. Uh, and it was a good opportunity for him. And it made sense for both parties. So that's what he said. And then there was some speculation in his Instagram post where he was saying, hey, the one saying goodbye to Prodigy. Um, someone said a midseason checkout. Uh-oh. And he said, wait, you think I'd just give up? Announcement coming soon. So some speculation was, oh, he's out of disc golf. He's going to start you know, touring and being a DJ full time and doing all that. He kind of squashed that himself by saying, no, 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 no. Like I'm still going to be playing disc yeah. golf. Now a couple kind of like red flags, if you will. The first one being his contract wasn't up until the end of next year. If his contract would have ended the end of this year, I would have been like, okay, that, that makes sense. Um, like they just, you know, maybe they were starting to talk about renegotiations and they weren't just, you know, one wanted one thing and one wanted the other and it didn't really make sense. So they're just like, hey, let's just, let's just peace out now. That still wouldn't really make a whole lot of sense to me. I think you still like 99.9% .9 of the time finish out your contract. But the fact that they ended it, and I don't know, it might have actually been since 2026 so it might even be more i can't i can't remember if it was the through next year or another year but regardless it's more than just this season so the to me yuli that's the first kind of like what is going on like why would why would and i guess in your position why would uh you know why would someone leave discraft before their contract was up well, it'd be pure speculation, obviously, but of course, I feel I feel we are like, the speculation podcast. <laughs> I feel, I feel like uh, in order for something like that to happen, one of the uh, or the other would be unhappy with what's going on. And typically, when you sign a long term contract like that, the player is the one that's happy, right? Mm -hmm. Like you're getting whatever sum of money, and you're happy with it. And then the company, 
I feel like in this case would probably be like, Hey, we're not happy with what's going down and we need to renegotiate, you know, moving forward type thing. Yeah. That that's, that's what I would think. Um, and it could be opposite. It could be completely opposite, but judging by, um, like I said, social media posts, um, even his play as of late, uh, I don't think it would be coming from his end. That just yeah. would be my honest opinion. Yeah, you're saying he he's and not then, and, you're saying he it wasn't his idea to leave Prodigy. That's what I would guess. Yeah, that's okay. what I would guess. Um, Honestly, cuz I, I I know his contract was really good. Like really good. Yeah, and and the thing too that I think is we have to look on like Prodigy's past. Oh, go ahead. And that's it. Yeah, that's what I was going to say next is um prodigy hasn't been hasn't shied away from doing this in the past too like being like hey you're not doing what we want we're out type yeah. thing and, but and that, I, like i said pure speculation and i would say too what i've seen i've seen players do this all the time of where players just like oh you don't want to give me what i want i'm leaving early we've seen it before with ricky leaving innova we've seen it in the past with Paige pierce leaving we've seen it in the past with uh, with other pros too just up and leaving their contract and basically putting the ball in the manufacturer's court to be like, Hey, you want to be the bad person and come after me. And prodigy was the first person to stand up and be like, uh, no, we're not letting you do this. Gannon. They were, the, as far as I'm concerned, they were the, at least yeah. they were the first company, um, <clears throat> not behind closed doors. Cause we don't know what has happened behind closed doors. But they were the first company to publicly come out and say, like, no, this isn't yeah. happening. Well, and and you got to think an, another another thing that could have happened is a bigger manufacturer, let's say, or maybe an outside company came in and talked to him and, and gave him a better deal. And he was like, hey, I want out type thing. You know what I mean? I can't be sponsored yeah. by this company. I'm getting more money from this person or these people or this company or what or whatever. And then that and, you know that makes your mind up pretty quick to where you're like, well, I'm losing money right now. Just being with this company, I need to bounce. Yeah. My, my guess is the contract was somewhat set up in a way of where, Hey, we're going to give you this amount of money. And then after that, if we hit these sales or this performance, whatever, we'll continue it for the rest of the contract. Similar to how some of these other contracts of where we hear guaranteed money and then the money that they could potentially get. I think that's maybe what this was set up as. And, you know, maybe he wasn't happy with what that was going to look like moving forward. There definitely was some sort of either breach of contract on someone's side. And I, and I, I appreciate both of them, you know, responding to me and giving me the information that they gave, but it, we can all agree. Like if things were going well, Kevin would still be sponsored by prodigy. Yeah. So clearly well, this some, contract something also came, came at, at the point where disc golf was kind of booming with all those big contracts mm -hmm. going around from the COVID days. Yep. And so contracts are big. People yep. were getting paid a lot of money. Things mm -hmm. slow down. Yep. And then all of a sudden there's not a lot of money. <laughs> and if you're paying a ton of money to somebody, maybe, maybe prodigies just can't afford it. That could be another thing. Like, Hey, we can't, we can't pay you anymore of what we owe you. Yeah. Sorry, but it's just not possible. And then that that's tough for a player too, because then you have to find a bunch of lawyers to get that money and that costs money. And it's, it might've been just a complete nightmare, but that yeah. all we'll speculation, see. You know? we'll, we'll see if we yeah. get more information going forward. I will say this, this does make it a little bit interesting. We've got, um, you know, Isaac Robinson coming up with his contract ending with prodigy. I believe he signed a one year deal. Tap space. <laughs> There, there could be some of that. Um, Ezra Robinson, too. I mean, there could be there could be some moves happening that Prod Prodigy's looking at, and maybe they saw a way of, hey, we can clear out this big contract that we have with Kevin and shift that towards one of these other guys. Um, well, Kevin, Kevin had just won the Pro Tour Championships, I think. Yeah, I mean, Kevin, I mean, let's be real. Like, he's not the only one that his, um, you know, his play, his like tournament finishes have changed from when his contract was.
right? Like we would be, we would be dishonest if we said he's the only one. Um, but yeah, we'll see. I mean, I don't know. We'll see how it all pans it, it out. Was nice. it, it was really nice to see this. Both parties having nice things to say about the other party. That was kind of nice. Yeah, it's like a little refreshing, right? We don't we don't get that all the yeah. time. Mm-hmm. So that was nice. So uh, you guys let us know where, where do you think he'll end up going? If I had a guess, I don't think he's going to go with a manufacturer. I think it's going to be more of a retail situation. That would be my guess. Um, what do you think, Yuli, if you had a guess? Well, I know it's not Discraft, so. Okay, well, there. We'll wax insider, that one off. <laughs> insider information there. Uh, MVP, I don't know how they could have enough cap space. Um, Lone Star, it seems like they were cutting a lot of ties. and Yeah, they were trying to remove big, people. Remove people. Um, yeah. Latitude and those guys, same kind of thing. It seemed like they were trying to get rid of some people. So that leaves like one big manufacturer. There's not not a lot of not a lot of manufacturers out there right now that are like looking to try to scoop people up. There's one with a lot of money that doesn't have a lot of players. I'll tell you that. That would be an interesting one. That'd be an interesting <laughs> one for sure. So we still uh, we should see what happens, and uh, like always, like hopefully Kevin can come on at some point. It was actually you know I posted on Twitter asking like, hey, who do you guys who would you guys like to see on Tour Life in upcoming episodes? And his name before this even got announced, his name popped up a couple times, right? Because I I think he would be an interesting interview too, because he is someone that the question is. Hey, has the sport kind of passed you? Yeah. Right? Because he was a top 10 guy. I think I think I think this could be the best thing for him. Just honestly. a complete brand new I, start. Yeah, get out there and start grinding it out, you know? That puts yeah. a chip on your shoulder to where you have to go work and prove yourself. Uh, my the first question I would want to ask him is has the courses increased in difficulty because I think they have. They definitely have courses are getting harder yeah. and harder. Has that caused a problem in your finishing based off of your skill set? Because we all know Kevin right. loves that big Heiser flip up game. The harder the courses have gotten, does that does that his game not translate as much as it used to in the past? It'd be interesting to see. Um, so. It's a fun watch, that's for sure. Yeah, I mean, when he's playing he, well, he's a fun watch. I was gonna say he is one of those. We we don't have that many guys on tour that really show the emotion. That really, you know, we talked about with Holland Hanley last week of where she really was getting into it and firing up the crowd. Yeah. We we didn't have too many people. We don't have that many people on tour like that. We have a lot of stoic, like monuments, basically out there. And <laughs> he was one of the people that would sprint down a fairway or do a backflip, or he would. He was different. He was electric. And it brought a lot of energy. Is. Yeah, he still is. Yeah, so you know, I would love to, for him to come on the podcast to kind of, ha- uh, you know, discuss that a little bit more. 